Moral statistician. I don't want any of your statistics. I took your whole batch and lit my pipe with it. I hate your kind of people. You're always ciphering out how much a man's health is injured and how much his intellect is impaired and how many pitiful dollars and cents he wastes in the course of 92 years indulgence and the fatal practice of smoking and in the equally fatal practice of drinking coffee and in playing billiards occasionally and in taking a glass of wine at dinner etc 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 and you were always figuring out how many women have been burned to death because of the dangerous fashion of wearing expansive hoops etc 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 you never see more than one side of the question you are blind to the fact that most old men in America smoke and drink coffee although according to your theory they ought to have died young and that hearty old Englishmen drink wine and survive it and portly old Dutchmen drink and smoke freely and yet grow older and fatter all the time and you never try to find out how much solid comfort relaxation and enjoyment a man derives from smoking in the course of a lifetime which is worth ten times the money he would save by letting it alone, nor the appalling aggregate of happiness lost in a lifetime of your kind of people from not smoking. Of course, you can save money by denying yourself all these little vicious enjoyments for fifty years, but then what can you do with it? What use can you put to it? Money can't save your infinitesimal soul. All the use that money can be put to is to purchase comfort and enjoyment in this life. Therefore, as you are an enemy to comfort and enjoyment, where is the use in accumulating cash? It won't do for you to say that you can use it for better purpose in furnishing a good table and in charities and in supporting tract societies because you know yourself that you people who have no petty vices are never known to give away a cent and that you stint yourself so in the matter of food that you are always feeble and hungry, and you never dare to laugh in the daytime for fear some poor wretch, seeing you in a good humor, will try to borrow a dollar of you, and in church you are always down on your knees with your eyes buried in the cushion when the contribution box comes around, and you never give the revenue officers a true statement of your income. Now you know all these things yourself, don't you? Very well, then. What is the use of your stringing out your miserable lives to a lean and withered old age? What is the use of your saving money that is so utterly worthless to you? In a word, why don't you go off somewhere and die and not be always trying to seduce people into becoming as ornery and as unlovable as you are yourselves by your ceaseless and villainous moral statistics? Now, I don't approve of dissipation, and I don't indulge in it either, but I haven't a particle of confidence in a man who has no redeeming petty vices whatever, so I don't want to hear from you any more. I think you are the very same man who read me a long lecture last week about the degrading vice of smoking cigars and then came back in my absence with your vile, reprehensible, fireproof gloves on and carried off my beautiful parlor stove. Simon Wheeler, Sonora. The following simple and touching remarks and accompanying poem have just come to hand from the rich and gold mining region of Sonora. To Mr. Mark Twain. The within parson which I have sought to poetry under the name and style of he done his level best was among the whitest men I ever see and it ain't ever man that knowed him that can find it in his heart to say he's glad the poor cuss is busted and gone home to the States. He was here in an early day and he was the handiest man that ever taken hold of anything that come along you most ever see, I judge. He was a cheerful, stern creature, always doing something, and no man can say he ever see him do anything by havers. Preaching was his natural gait, but he weren't a man to lay back and twiddle his thumbs because there didn't happen to be nothing doing in his own special line. No, sir, he was a man who would meander forth and 
stir up something for himself. His last axe was to go pile on a king's and call Cotillon to fill, which, but he didn't fill. When there was a flush out again him, and naturally see he went under, and so he was cleaned out, as you may say, and he struck the home trail, cheerful but flat broke. I know this talented man in Arkansas, and if you'd print this humble tribute to his George abilities, I'd be greatly obliged to his unhappy friend. He done his level best. Was he a mining on the flat? He done it with a zest. Was he a leading to, of the choir? He done his level best. If he had a regular task to do, he never took no rest. Or if it was off and on the same, he done his level best. If he was preaching on his beat, he tramped from east to west. North to south in cold and heat, he done his level best. He'd yank a sinner out in Hades and land him with the blessed. Then snatch a prayer and waltz in again and do his level best. He'd cuss and sing and howl and pray and dance and drink and jest. And lie and steal all one to him, he'd done his level best. Whatever this man was sought to do, he'd done it with a zest. No matter what his contract was, he'd do his level best. Verily, this man was gifted with gorgeous abilities, and it is a happiness to me to embalm the memory of their luster in these columns. If it were not that the poet crop is unusually large and rank in California this year, I would encourage you to continue writing, Simon. But as it is, perhaps it might be too risky in you to enter against so much opposition. Inquirer wishes to know which is the best brand of smoking tobacco and how it is manufactured. The most popular mind I do not feel at liberty to give an opinion as to the best, and so I simply say the most popular Smoking tobacco is the miraculous conglomerate they call Kilkenick. It is composed of equal parts of tobacco stems, chopped straw, old soldiers, fine shavings, oak leaves, dog fennel, corn shucks, sunflower petals, outside leaves of the cabbage plant, and any refuse of any description whatever that costs nothing and will burn. After the ingredients are thoroughly mixed together, they are run through a chopping machine and soaked in a spittoon. The mass is then sprinkled with fragrant scotch snuff packed into various seductive shapes labeled Genuine Kilkenick from the old original manufactory at Richmond and sold to consumers at a dollar a pound. The choicest brands contain a double portion of old soldiers and sell at a dollar and a half. Genuine Turkish tobacco contains a triple quantity of old soldiers and it is worth two or three dollars, according to the amount of service the said old soldiers had previously seen. And B, this article is preferred by the Sultan of Turkey. His picture and autograph are on the label. Take a handful of Kilkenick, crush it as fine as you can, and examine it closely. You'll find that you can make as good an analysis of it as I have done. You must not expect to discover any particles of genuine tobacco by this rough method. However, to do that, it will be necessary to take your specimen to the mint and subject it to a fire assay. A good article of cheap tobacco is now made of chopped pine straw and Spanish moss. It contains one old soldier to the ton and is called fine old German tobacco. Professional beggar. No, you are not obliged to take greenbacks at par. Melted Mowbray, Dutch Flat. This correspondent sends a lot of doggerel and says it has been regarded as very good in Dutch flat. I give a specimen verse. The Syrian came down like a wolf on the fold, and his cohorts were gleaming in purple and gold, and the sheen of his spear shone like stars on the sea when the blue waves rolls nightly on deep Galilee. 
There, that will do. That may be very good Dutch flat poetry, but it won't do in the metropolis. It is too smooth and blubbery. It reads like buttermilk gurgling from a jug. What the people ought to have is something spirited, something like Johnny comes marching home. However, keep on practicing and you may succeed yet. There is genius in you, but too much blubber. <laughs>